So what happens if you buy a business and you believe that the cash flow is about $200,000 and after you buy it, you finally understand that the cash flow is only half of that? Um, you'd probably be in trouble, right? Hey there everyone, it's uh, David Barnett from the investlocalbook.com blog site where I discuss local investing, personal finance, buying and selling businesses, small business deals, transactions, managing business, and all those other topics that you so kindly send me questions about. Today I want to talk about the problem of double counting income because it's come up with clients in the last month or so, actually two different occasions. Um, so I know this is a problem that exists out there and it has to do with ignorance about accounting and financial statements. First though, um, if any of you out there have read my best-selling book, Invest Local, and you are interested in learning uh, how to actually put together deals and all the paperwork involved in that, my localinvestingcourse.com program, the How to Do Local Investing Deals from A to Z course, uh, is actually going to be discontinued as of June 30th, 2016. So if you wanted to do the existing self-study program, you need to go and buy it right away. It's going to be replaced with what I, in my opinion, is a much better program. It's going to be a local investing academy, which will have a set semester schedule. So there will be a start date and an end date. Students will enroll, do the education program, and then automatically be put into a mastermind program moderated by myself that will go for four months to help people get from reading the book to actually doing their first deal. The biggest piece of feedback I've gotten from Invest Local is people get excited about it, they want to do deals, but then they can't seem to get that first deal off the ground. And so with the help of the other students and myself, I want to lead you through that process. There's also going to be a private Facebook group for the students so they can interact with each other and a graduates group so that all past attendees of the program are going to be able to congregate and talk about deals and talk about experiences. So it's going to be a fantastic program. It will require a bigger investment than the current course, which is why I'm advising people that if you do just want to do the self-study program, you should go right now to localinvestingcourse.com and sign up and buy the program before June 30th, 2016. So let's get to the problem of double counting income. I've done several videos on this channel about how cash flow is the key to value for small businesses. That's what you're buying as a business buyer, you're buying cash flow. So there's videos on how we value businesses and there's videos on how we make adjustments to the cash flow with respect to the owner's salary. So I'm not going to touch on those topics today. That stuff is in the video feed for this channel. So quick accounting overview. I've got two different statements up here on the whiteboard. I've got an income statement and I've got a simple balance sheet. Okay, so my income statement says that I have sales of 100, I've got a cost of goods sold of 50, which the difference is my gross profit, so a gross profit of 50. Um, I then have overheads of 30, which leave me with a net income of 20. Okay, so in this example, I've got a net income of 20. So the two cases that have come up here recently are ones where buyers have been looking at income statements and they start asking the sellers questions. How much money do you take out of the business? Are there personal expenses hidden within, for example, the overheads? Or do some of these cost of goods sold actually represent things that you took out of the business and brought home? So for example, in a restaurant, maybe the owner of the restaurant takes his personal household groceries out of the business, for example. So in many small businesses, these you know, perks actually contribute significantly to the lifestyle and benefit of ownership that the owner accrues uh, in having the business. So they go through these questions, how much money do you take out of the business? And what they're told is, you know, last year I took this amount of money out of the business. Here's the problem though. When you're told something like that by an owner, you have to identify which income statement lines those monies actually come from because this was the problem in both cases. The owners of the company were taking dividends out of the company. Dividends have nothing to do with the income statement. They're a feature of the balance sheet. So over here on the balance sheet, well, let's do a quick review. One side of the balance sheet is all of your assets. The other side is your liabilities and your equity. 
the liabilities and equity always have to equal the assets. That's why it's called a balance sheet. It balances. And sometimes this is presented in a different format with the assets being up above and the liabilities and equity being down below. But it always has to add up to the same thing on both sides. In the equity section, if you look at a balance sheet, you're going to find several different kinds of components of equity. Um, there's what we call share capital, which is the original money that the person who started the business put in to buy the original shares. And in a lot of small businesses, it's a nominal figure. It might be $100, for example. Then you might have um, what are called retained earnings. So let's think about that statement, that term, just for a minute. Retained earnings. So these are earnings of the company kept in, retained. Okay. So quite literally what happens is the net income of the business, if you don't take that money out of the business, it ends up, it stays in the business. Where does that get represented? It gets represented in the retained earnings. And if you look at some accounting software uh, that does interim financial statements, so an internal year-to-date statement, and you look at the balance sheet, what you'll often find is that there's a retained earnings from prior years, and then it'll show you a net income or loss line in the equity category, um, which will match the net income or loss on the balance sheet. And then they, they merge them together at the end of the year when the, when the year-end reconciliation is done. So here's the problem uh, that came up in these two people's uh, circumstances, is the owners were taking equity out of the business in the form of dividends, so they had a net income section in here, but then they had a negative figure in here which represented a dividend paid out. Okay, So net income was here, and then it was moving over here and being withdrawn over here. And what was happening was the, the buyers were using this net income and then adding back monies that the seller said that he took out of the business, but in fact what he was taking out of the business was the net income, just he was taking it out from over here. So they ended up adding that back to itself, which is a double counting. And when you end up doing that, you end up in a circumstance where a business, you know, you may believe it has a $200,000 discretionary cash flow, and you may value the business based on that discretionary cash flow, when in fact it does not. It has a discretionary cash flow far less. That would put you in a position where you've grossly overpaid for a business, um, and usually by the time you get those accounting lessons, it's too late unless you have the right people working with you as you work through these deals. Um, and of course, that's what I do. So if you ever want to engage with me to help you look at one of these deals, please don't be afraid to send me an email or pick up the phone, 506-381-8416. If you found the information in this video to be useful, please like it or share it depending on the platform that you're viewing it on. It's the only way that the systems that manage the internet have of knowing that the content is actually good and that people would enjoy it. If you found the information useful, you know that there's somebody else out there who needs to see this video. Thanks, come by the blog site, sign up for my email list, get videos like this one every week in your inbox. I do not abuse my subscribers with tons of spam every day because I don't like it. Thanks, and I'll talk to you later. You made it to the end of the video. That's great. Why not come over to my blog site, investlocalbook.com, where you can see all of my latest posts and videos. You can also take the time to watch my welcome video, see what I'm all about, and if you wish, sign up for my email list. I only send out one email each week. You get to choose which topics you're interested in so that you only get information that you want to learn about and it's easy to unsubscribe anytime. Click my free resources link and have access to all of my free ebooks, audiobooks, and other PDF downloads. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.